So, welcome to uh, today's lecture. Uh, if you recall, we had uh, started looking at the notion of uh, continuity for functions of uh, a real variable and its applications uh, in our uh, subject. Uh, we looked at uh, continuous functions and we were looking at uh, what is called the intermediate value property for continuous functions, which stated as follows. That let f be a, a function defined on an interval a b to r, uh, which is continuous. So, the function is given to be continuous and alpha and beta are two uh, real numbers which are in the range of the function. That means, that there are points x 1 and x 2 belonging to a b say that f of x 1 is equal to alpha and f of x 2 is equal to beta. So, the function takes the values uh, alpha and beta at some points x 1 and x 2 in the domain. Then the claim is that for every uh, real number r between alpha and beta, there exists a number c such that uh, between x 1 and x 2 such that f of c is equal to r. That means, if two values alpha and beta are taken by a continuous function, then every other value in between alpha and beta should also be taken by the function at some point. So, this is for the intermediate value because it says that any value in between alpha and beta should be taken at least once by the function if alpha and beta are taken. So, th this is a property of continuous functions and we had seen uh, uh, in the previous lecture what geometrically uh, it means. It means that the break, there is no break in the graph of the function. Once you start plotting uh, the graph of the function from the point a comma f of a to b comma f of b, once you start uh, plotting uh, drawing the graph you should not lift your pen uh, till you reach from the point A to the point B. So, that is and mathematically this uh, theorem means that the images of intervals are intervals. So, uh, a very special case of this theorem would be when alpha is uh, a number less than 0 and beta is something bigger than 0. So, it, so the theorem uh, as a corollary of this, the, if f is a continuous function, so, that f at some point x 1 is bigger than 0 and f at x 2 is less than 0, then for some uh, point in between x 1 and x 2 the function should take the value 0. That means, for a continuous function if at some point the graph is above the x axis and the graph is at some other point the graph is below the x axis and if the function is continuous that at some point in between it must uh, cross the x axis. So, there must be a point c where the value is equal to 0. So, this uh, uh, theorem has applications in uh, uh, lot of applications in mathematics, but let us see one application in our subject of uh, in our subject. So, let us uh, take a demand and supply functions of a commodity are given as the following. So, um, the demand function demand is a function of the price. So, demand is equal to 100 minus 2 p and the supply is again a function of uh, uh, the price and that is equal to 3 p. So, um, essentially this, this is a system of two linear equations in two variables and one can find what is the price where uh, demand will be equal to supply. So, that is what is called the equilibrium price, the price p 0 where demand equals uh, the supply is called the equilibrium price and that value is uh, called P e of uh, the commodity. If in this case, if you want to solve these equations, we can put the value of P from one equation to the other and solve. So, D P e is equal to S P e, demand is equal to supply that is another way of doing it and that will give you uh, that this equation demand is equal to 100 minus 2 P e is equal to 3 times P of e. So, that from here get P of e equal to 20. So, when the price is equal to 20, demand will be equal to the supply and there will be equilibrium. And there is, uh, I want to illustrate this in another way as follows. So, let us, uh, so geometrically uh, this system of two equations, when you solve you get this price P e equal to 20. So, this red one is the demand curve that is a linear curve under minus 2 P e and the supply is uh, equal to 
3 pe so that is a line linear equation passing to the origin so these are the uh, two graphs of these two equations dpe and uh, dp and sp so wherever they cross that is a point where that is a point p of e so that is a common point that is a point of equilibrium when demand equal to the supply so that is p of e so that is uh, okay uh, solving it geometrically or solving it by system of linear equations. Let us look at another way of uh, uh, solving this namely let us uh, uh, look at those two equations right and uh, at the price when P e is equal to 20 so you get both to be equal to demand is equal to so that is finding at what when the price is what is a, a demand and what is a supply both are equal to 60. Another way of solving this would be that let us consider the function f of p, define a new function which is demand minus the supply. So demand is equal to 100 minus, uh, so demand function if you recall was uh, 100 minus 2p and supply was uh, equal to uh, 3p equal to 20. So let us put those values uh, in the two equations. So let us find fp which is dp minus sp. So we'll simplify this 100 minus 5p. So for this function uh, if we want uh, dp equal to s of p that is same as saying that we should uh, have a point where um, f of p is equal to 0. So what we have to show is and uh, so this is equal uh, f of p is equal to 0. Now note that d of p is a linear function so that is a continuous function. Uh, s of p is a linear function that is a continuous function. So, right? so uh, and we can observe that from here if uh, p is uh, something say uh, 100 then this value is negative. Right? p is 100 then this value is negative. If p is equal to say 5 then this value is positive. So there are points where the function takes positive values and uh, there are points where the function takes the negative values and it is a continuous function. So by intermediate value property there will be a point where uh, we will uh, we'll have uh, fp equal to 0. So demand will be equal to supply. But in general finding a point uh, where uh, this uh, f of p is 0 for a continuous function say intermediate value property just says that there is a uh, point where um, uh, the function will cross the x axis if, if it is positive at some point and negative at some point. But it does not tell you what is that point. So uh, this is purely an existence theorem which ensures the existence of a equilibrium for example. It does not say what is the point of the equilibrium. So that is uh, one has to find some other ways of locating uh, that point. In our case uh, it is not very difficult because the functions are simple. So uh, this will be so because at some point so we can find out these points right because linear function so it is okay f of p it is also is a linear function so you can find out that. But in general it may not be easy so but at least uh, in many complicated problems where you want to show that there will be a point of equilibrium this existence uh, theorem is quite useful. So intermediate value property uh, of continuous functions comes handy when you want to show the existence of uh, a point where the value is 0. So there is a, we said that uh, the property of uh, intermediate value property says that the image of an interval is an interval under continuous functions. Here is a, a slight strengthening of that result. It says that if the domain is a closed bounded interval a, b. So note that here is a closed bounded interval. Uh, so f is a continuous function on a closed bounded interval. Then there exist points let us call two points call x min and x max belonging to the domain a b such that f of x the value at every point in between is bigger than f min and is um, less than or equal to the value f max. That means this also indicates that for a continuous function uh, um, there are bounds that the range of the continuous function has to be bounded by the value f x min and f x max. That means there are two values you can call this as 
small m say and call this value as a capital M. So, uh, let us just uh, uh, write this property. Uh, let me draw it a picture of this. So, let us say this is a, a function. Uh, so, this is the point A and this is the point B and let us say the graph of the function is something like it goes like this. So, this is the value and this is the value, this is the value. So, this is the point f of a and this is the value f of b. So, uh, saying that this uh, is a continuous function, so there is no break in the graph of the function and what we are saying is there is a point where the function takes the minimum value. So, in this case for example, uh, at this point if you call this as x min, so this is a value let us call it as m which is nothing but f of x 1 and there is a point uh, obviously in this case this is this point. So, this is also f of x max. So, this point is also equal to x max. Right. So, it says that the graph of the function will lie between these two lines. So, that is what it says. So, if f is continuous function on a close bounded interval a b to r, then it says that f of x for every value will be less than or equal to f of x max and will be bigger than or equal to f at x min. Means, so another also this also says that the range of f is equal to if I call this as small m, call this as capital M, so small m to capital M. So, this is the value small m and this is the value capital M. So, uh, this uh, theorem says that if f is a, a continuous function on a close bounded interval right a b, then it is bounded that means there are two numbers small m and capital M. So, that the range of f is equal to small m to capital M. That also means that the smallest value is attained at some point. So, there will be point x min which will be equal to m small m and x max which will be equal to. So, uh, one way of just understanding this uh, theorem is that for a continuous function on a close bounded interval uh, is bounded and attains its maximum and the minimum values. So, uh, we will see uh, applications of this theorem later on when we want to do optimization problems in economics, commerce and management problems. So, this is what is called the min max property of continuous functions. Right. So, next we look at uh, a concept uh, in uh, our subject uh, what is called the marginal of a function. So, what is marginal of a function? Uh, it, this concept of marginal of a function uh, is a important concept and, and it um, is applicable, is useful in analyzing decision making problems uh, for a short run when it is possible to change an input. The input can be changed for a, a short run. So, so we will try to make it precise uh, mathematically what it means. So, uh, what we are saying is in every business model one uh, wants to ensure that the benefits of certain activities outweigh the cost in order to be profitable. right? So, that is what the uh, any business is about. So, one tool for weighing this relationship is called marginal analysis. So, uh, how is it this, what is this analysis? So, let us look at that. The cost and the benefits of a small change, so marginal word in English means uh, small which can be uh, very marginal is something which can be neglected in English, but we are saying that the cost and the benefits uh, of a marginal change in the production of good or an additional unit of input for a good. So, what is the uh, relationship of this vis a vis cost and the benefits? So, let us uh, for example, let us like a toy making firm uh, might be using uh, uh, how the, they can use marginal analysis to determine the potential benefits of increase in the production. Some firm is making toys and they want to know how this tool what we are saying can be used in uh, uh, analyzing increase in production. So, let us say 
uh, these are applications of this decision making namely that uh, we can allocate our resources in a better way. So, this is all uh, why this tool is uh, useful marginal analysis. So, let us see what this marginal analysis is. Let us look at a company which is producing 50 smartphones in a day. So, the company is producing uh, smartphones and they are uh, their capacity at present they are able to produce 50 smartphones in a day. And they, uh, uh, the cost of producing 50 phones is rupees 25,000, right? So, that is the cost of producing this. So, selling price of each uh, smartphone is rupees 800. So, and there are 50 smartphones. So, that gives them uh, a revenue of 40,000 rupees by selling those 50 phones, right? So, now the company, if the company produces 51 smartphones, if they increase their production by one smartphone, the total revenue would be one more phone is sold. Earlier it was 40,000, one more phone sold means 800 rupees. So, the revenue will be 48,800 rupees. And what will be the cost? The cost of uh, producing, uh, the co total cost will be 25,850, right? So, because 50 phones, Okay, so uh, when we divide by that cost of producing each, so total cost will be twenty-five thousand. Will there be one additional cost? So should the company be producing one more smartphone or not? So this is the cost of producing fifty-one phones. This is the revenue they get. So what we get is the marginal benefit. That so marginal means one more phone is produced. The fifty-first phone is produced. So forty-eight thousand. 40,800 40, uh, that is what they are getting and uh, minus 40,000 so total will be 800. So, that is a marginal benefit uh, they are getting. And what is the marginal cost? Cost is 25,800 minus 25,000 right. So, the cost is uh, marginal cost is 850. So, that clearly indicates that uh, there will be a, at a loss of uh, rupees 50 if they produce one more phone. So, just by analyzing the production of one more, keeping the price, selling price same leads them to decide that they should not be producing more phones. So, the net benefits fall by 50 rupees, so they should not be producing uh, more phones. So, this is how marginal uh, uh, analysis is used in uh, deciding whether uh, you should be uh, doing uh, increasing the production or not. So, uh, let us formally define for a function y equal to f of x, it is marginal at a point x 0 function as a domain x belongs to some x. So, formally we are def defining now what is called the marginal of a function is defined as the result of output right. So, defined as the result on the output by a additional unit of input. That means, at the point x 0, if x 0 changes to x 0 plus 1, what is the change in y that comes, right? So, that is a mark called the marginal uh, of the function y. So, note that, uh, so what we are saying is increase in a unit input, right, will output will change uh, marginally. So, note that when x is changed to x plus 1, y will change to some value. So, uh, the marginal is again a function of the variable. So, given a function, its marginal is again a function, right, a function of the same variable x. So, let us uh, look at uh, another example uh, to illustrate this. Uh, consider the uh, input output model for a function given by y equal to uh, 2 of x, where x is the labor employed. So, this is the input output model input is the labor and y is the output for a labor. So, it is a linear function uh, y equal to 2 of x. So, it clearly indicates this is uh, if you increase x, y is going to increase because the slope for this uh, linear function is positive. So, it is going to increase. So, increase in output anyway from this formula it is clear that if we increase uh, uh, the input x by 1, then output is uh, doubled, it is 2, right. 
if x is f x goes to x plus 1 right then this will go 2x plus 2 so y will increase by 2 units so doubled in in the sense that if y was something so increase in 1 gives it 2 times increase in y so right so the marginal of this is equal to 2 for every x right so marginal is equal to 2 for every x so it's quite clear right so when x goes to x plus 1 the difference right y will change by 2 so mp of x is equal to 2 so mp indicates this is the marginal of p okay this is what is called marginal of the production right output or the production uh, for every x increase so that is 2 so there is a constant marginal is a constant function however now notice that more output is generated even when the large inputs of labor uh, are there even if other are fixed so in this uh, model if x keeps on uh, increasing the y keeps on increasing right so because the marginal is positive and that is 2 that does not seem to be a, a very good scenario, but because normally in, increase in uh, the labor and keeping everything else constant uh, does not increase the production. Uh, this seems a contradictory to the business model. So, uh, what is to be done? So, in fact, one would expect that the larger inputs of labor, other factors remaining fixed, should reduce the output and it may become 0, output may become 0. So, let us uh, look at uh, some illustration. So, marginal should not, the idea is that marginal should not be modeled as a continuous function. Uh, to uh, give a uh, illustration of this, let us uh, look at a uh, particular example. See, the example uh, is that of uh, a, a thermal power station which has a capacity of 1500 megawatts per hour as and the input is coal. So, it is a thermal power station. So, input is coal, coal is put in to generate uh, heat and then steam and then gives the electricity to run the turbines. So, electricity produced uh, is produced and the capacity of that thermal power plant, the maximum it can produce is 1500 megawatts per hour, right. So, uh, in, uh, uh, in a day, so, let us uh, calculate how much uh, the power station can produce in a day. The maximum it can produce in a day is 1500 per hour. So, 24 hours, so that gives 36,000 megawatts um, uh, of, so this is, this should be per day. It is not per hour, so that should be per day, right. So, uh, let us say that uh, uh, 250 kg of coal is required to generate 1 megawatt of power. So, uh, this much of uh, coal is required to generate 1 megawatt of power. So, that means the unit of uh, quintal of coal increases in output will increase output by. So, if I put a unit, one unit of uh, increase, that means one quintal of coal, if I, we increase, then the output will increase by. 1000 divided by 250 that is 4 megawatts per hour, right. So, that is clear. So, keep in mind that uh, 250 kg of coal is required to generate 1 megawatt uh, of power, right. So, uh, 1 quintal of coal, so we divide by that, so that is 4 uh, um, megawatt is, so that is, uh, okay. So, if I, for one unit increase, will give me 4 megawatt per hour. So, what does that mean? That means that the marginal output per day for coal is 4 till the plant reaches its maximum output. So, this is a marginal, right. So, marginal for the uh, thermal power plant, if we increase uh, the input that is a coal by 1 unit, then it increases by uh, 4, right. So, this is uh, 4 uh, um, megawatt per hour. So, that is till it reaches maximum. So, that and when will it reach maximum? It will reach maximum uh, for how many quintals are required to reach the maximum? Maximum capacity is 36,000. 
So x into 4 is 36,000 that is 900 quintals. So when x is 900 quintals, the plant would have reached its maximum capacity. That means what? That means after that even if we bring in more uh, coal increase, then the, the capacity is not going to increase, the power is not going to increase, the production is not going to increase. So that means what? The increase in labor, if you bring in more labor to bring in more coal, the increase in labor will increase utilization of more coal and hence more production till the maximum is reached, right? And after this increase in production is reached, even if there is no, uh, even if there is increase in labor, the output is not going to increase because that is the maximum capacity of the uh, plant. If you look at the Y, the marginal product, so Yx is the marginal. So marginal remains 4, so this is the marginal of the product. So marginal remains 4 till it should be 9000 here, till 9000 uh, is reached and then suddenly the marginal becomes 0. Even if you increase um, uh, in X, there is not going to be any increase in the marginal is not going to change, right? So this is what uh, the marginal curve looks like for this scenario. So there is a, a discontinuity for this, right? So there is a discontinuity at the point X. So that is uh, good enough, okay? So normally marginals will be discontinuous. So in a model for economics, one tries to bring in uh, models in economics so that the marginals are not continuous functions. So that is the conclusion of this analysis. So we will continue uh, with our, uh, what we have done till now is looked at uh, the notion of limit, notion of continuity of functions and we have looked at some properties of, uh, special properties of continuous functions namely one was the intermediate value property and the other was the minimax theorem and both of them will be used later in our analysis. And we have tried to define what is called the marginal at present in a very uh, uh, informal way here. We will come to the marginal when we uh, discuss the notion of derivative a bit later. At present we have, what we have looked at is marginals for uh, mainly uh, linear functions. They become, they tend out, they become, they turn out to be uh, constant functions, right. So we'll continue our study of functions and their properties in the next lecture. Thank you.